Hi everyone. So today we're going to be covering the Kedah paper. Okay, the Kedah uh, actually it's from SMK Merbok lah. Okay, uh, Kedah. And today we're going to be covering paper one, and then Friday we will cover paper two. Okay. Now this paper is actually agak susah lah. Okay, paper one and paper two. Okay, they are agak mencabar, uh, and there are quite a number of questions uh, that uh, even saya pun uh, I took a little bit of time just to figure out what he was saying. Lah. Okay, so let's jump straight into it because uh, so this paper is a little bit difficult. Lah. Okay, so question number one. Lah. Given fx equals to 2 plus 3x, 2 over 3 plus x, and then of course, because there is a pembawa di sini, kan? okay, therefore there has to be a qualifier over here. Lah. Okay, so x tidak boleh sama dengan p. Okay, so whenever you see this, okay, 3 plus x, uh, okay, cannot be the same as 0. So therefore, x cannot be the same as negative 3. Makanya p adalah sama dengan negative 3. Okay, this is the basic of uh, functions. Lah. Okay, ini agak senang. Uh. And then f1 is just kasih masukkan 1 di dalam x. So f1 will be 2 over 3 plus 1 will be 1 over 2. Okay, kalau kamu kira-kira, then you get 1 over 2. Done. Okay, so this question is simple lah. Okay, nothing much difficult here. You just have to remember that uh, kalau ada benda macam ni kan, bawah tidak boleh sama dengan kosong. Okay, the more simple it is. 3 plus x cannot be equal to 0 because if it's equal to 0, then it will be mad error. Okay, so itu yang kita mau avoid. We want to avoid the mad error. Okay, number two, find the range of values for which this. This is uh, also quite standard. Okay, nothing much. 1 plus x. So the first thing you do is make it into a quadratic inequality. So 2x squared minus x minus 1 is more than, uh, sorry, less than 0. And then you, of course, you factorize. Okay, this is standard. Lah. So 2 x and then here is x this is 1 and then 1 <coughs> this will be plus and this will be minus sorry my mistake it should be minus and then plus okay this is plus a apa ni zero 2x plus 1 okay and then x minus 1 uh, minus 2 minus 1 yeah okay so from here then you will get this okay so over here Ini akan jadi negative half, and then this side will become 1. And because it is less than 0, okay, because it is less than 0, so you want this side. Kamu mau lorik di sebelah sini, and the answer for this will be negative half is less than x and less than 1. Or oh, x is in between negative half and 1 lah. Okay, um, so a common mistake, ha, selalu orang akan silap di sini lah. What, what people will make mistake is, they will forget to put the this one. Some people will just put this. Half is less than x is less than 1. Salah, because our original question memang ada ini sedia. Okay, so be very careful with things like this. Ha. Okay, because, uh, yeah, because things like this are where you shouldn't be losing marks lah. Jangan hilang marka di sini. Okay, so pay attention to these kind of things. Okay, interestingly enough, this number three question is also same as number two. Uh, it is a quadratic inequality question. Okay, but, so okay, so you're given the speed of a particle, yada yada, given this formula, V equals to 6T minus T squared. Okay, and then after that, the particle starts from rest, sounding as if it's like a physics question. Okay, and then after that, uh, comes to rest, at z, so travels from y to z, last starts on zero, ends with zero, and that's a very good thing. So find the time interval when the particle has a speed greater than five. Okay, so the speed is given by v, so that means we want a v is more than five. 
Oh, sorry, not even more or less. Uh, it's, it's just more than 5. Because greater, not greater or equal to 5. Okay, therefore, I can say that 6t minus t squared is greater than 5. And this situation is the same as this situation just now. It is a quadratic inequalities question. So, uh, let me set it. Negative t squared plus 6t minus 5 is more than 0. Now, because I'm using uh, quadratic inequalities, I don't really like the idea of negative t squared. So I change the sign. Bila saya tukar tanda semua, saya akan tukar semua arah. So what happens is t squared minus 6t plus 5 is less than 0. Okay, change symbol. Okay, when I change symbol, everything changes, including the direction. So when you factorize this, you get t minus 5 and t minus 1. Is less than zero. So you want over here is one and over here is five. And since we want less than zero, this is over here. So the answer will be one is less than t is less than five. Okay. So just to recap, huh? if your answer is here, then it's the in-between answer. Lah. If our answer is here, okay, color the mean that. Kalau dia minta lebih daripada kosong, then we want to, you know, lower this side. Okay, so this will be t is less than 1 and this side will be t is more than 5. Okay, so there are only two kinds of answers for quadratic inequalities. Don't forget that. Lah. Okay. Alright. Okay, this is where the tough stuff begins. Lah. So question 1 to 3 is kind of, the, you know, like, okay, kacang. Kacang putih punya soalan lah. Nothing really special about the question. Okay, the steps are pretty standard lah. But question number four is where the tough stuff begins. Okay, let's start with question A. Yeah. So you have 27 minus, sorry, power of minus log 3y equals to 64. Okay, so I'm like, what is this? Okay, sabar. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I know, sabar. So what you can actually do is, uh, okay, let's go back now. Uh. So remember uh, if um, uh, if you have log, sorry, so if you have uh, n equals to a to the power of x. Okay, so if I change it to log, I'll get log a n equals to x. Okay, think about it now. Uh. So let's say, let's say now, uh, I want to change this. Okay, this, uh, which is now in this form, okay, to a log form. Okay, a suitable log that I might choose to be log 3. Okay, actually there are many ways to answer this question. I'm, I'm just choosing one. Uh. So let's say I change it. Uh, sorry, let's say uh, I change this over to become like this. Uh. So what I will get now uh, is I will get... Uh, sorry negative log 3y equals to log 27, 64. Okay, this is what I will get. Negative log 3y equals to log 27, 64. Okay, so I bring the x down, I bring the power down, and I bring the a across. Okay, so the a across, saya kasih jadi ini. So since this is the original a, so when I bring across, it becomes the base of the log already lah. Okay, now the good thing is here is log 3, this is 27, and actually we can change it to log 3. So negative log 3y equals to log 364 over log 327. Okay, now side track, uh, log 327 is actually log 3, 3 to the power of 3, which is actually equals to 3 lah, because I bawa 3 ke depan, 3 times log 3, 3 is 1, so it's just 3. Okay, so I can say that this is negative log 3y equals to log 364 over 3. Okay, bawa 3 ke atas, I will get negative 3 log 3y equals to log 364. Okay, and then I'm almost there. 
I bring the negative 3 up. So I'll get log 3 y to the power of negative 3 equals to log 3 64. And since both logs are the same, I can say that y to the power of negative 3 equals to 64. Okay, and okay, sabar sabar. Huh? <laughs> okay, so the problem now is you have this negative la. Okay, so don't worry about it. Sixty four. Okay, what happens over here is, uh, you can change it back to, uh, sorry, you can change it to. Oh, you know what? Cannot. So what I did over here is I did um. I change 64 to 4 to the power of 3. So this is y to the power of negative 3. Okay, so if I want to change this 4 to the power of 3 to negative 3, so I'll get 1 to the power of 4, uh, 1 over 4 to the power of 3 is negative 3. Okay, therefore I can say that y equals to 1 over Yeah, <laughs> does that make sense? I think that's an easier way to do this, but I don't know why I'm choosing this very strange method to this one. Actually, what I did over here, dari pada sini kan, I just, I basically just use calculator lah. Okay, I use calculator and then I just got y equals to 1 over 4. Because 1 over 4 to the power of negative 3, yeah, you'll get 64. Because the power is negative, lah, so that's the... That's the strange part about this question. Lah. Okay, so... Yeah. <laughs> okay, so... Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, if you don't understand... Okay, if, if this part is a little bit confusing to you, um, I will try to explain it again. Lah. Okay, uh, maybe in a later part. Lah. But actually, when I was doing this question, I terus pakai calculator, ba. I just got, oh, 64 is 4 to the power of 3. So, okay, so since the power is negative on y, so it's 1 over 4. Because 1 over 4 to the power of negative 3, I got 64. Okay, so, saya dapat jawapan terus daripada sana. Okay? Alright. Ini baru soalan A. Saya belum lagi soalan B. Sorry, ya. Huh? Okay, so question B. I think question B is a little bit easier. I think so lah. Although there's a double log, actually it's easier uh, compared to question A. Or maybe size saja yang mengasi susah keadaan lah. Okay, log 1, 2, 5. And then you have another log 3, 5x minus 7. Apa ini? Okay, equals to 1 over 3. So this one, we still use the same thing lah. Log a n equals to x. So I want to change it this way now. Okay, notice lah, our n... Okay, our n is this. Okay, so therefore, if I change it back, I will get log 3, 5x minus 7 equals to log, uh, sorry, not equal, not log, uh -huh. uh, equals to 1, 2, 5 to the power of 1 over 3. Okay, I bring the number 1, 2, 5 up. Lah. Okay, so then after that, uh, I can calculate 1, 2, 5 to the power of 1 over 3 using my calculator. I think, yeah, I think I can. So 1, 2, 5 to the power of 1 over 3. Don't forget to use uh, bracket. Lah, okay, equals to 5. So log 3, 5x minus 7 equals to 5. Okay, now I use the same thing again uh, to do the thing that I want. So I'll get 5x minus 7 equals to 3 to the power of 5. Okay, so I'm doing the same conversion, okay, between log and the index. Okay, and then over here is pretty simple. It is 3 to the power of 5, you get 2, 4, 3. Okay, 5x minus 7, so 5x equals to 2, 5, 0, x equals to 50. Okay, you'll be done. So, uh, I would say that this B question is a simple question. A is a little bit more difficult. Cuma, 
Okay, cuma ini kamu kena ingat. The relationship between these two, okay, needs to be remembered lah. Okay, how to change from index form. Okay, so this is index form. This is log form. Okay, the relationship between these two forms is very important. Index form and log form. Both questions A and B uh, require you to do this. Okay, and now that I think about it, I think there's a simpler way to do question A lah. But uh, I will I will come back to that if we have time lah. Huh? Okay, question number five. In an arithmetic progression, the sum of the first n terms is given by this. Okay, now if you remember from our last class, uh, I already mentioned, if the formula is given, don't even bother with the formula in the this one in the formula book. Okay, you are not allowed to use that formula. You have to use the formula given in the question if the question gives. If the question doesn't give a formula, then you use the SN formula that you find in the front of the book. Lah. Okay, but if the formula is given, if they give you a new formula, ambil jak formula itu as it is, okay, and use that formula. So find the sum of the terms from the 6th term to the 18th term. So 6th term to 18th term means S18 minus S5. Huh? Be very careful with this. Okay. Be very careful with this. It is not S18 minus S6, which is the most common mistake uh, that a lot of students will make. Kalau saya mau daripada ke enam, I cannot take out the sixth term. I must include the sixth term. So saya mau S5. So when I do S18, I'll get 9 times 18 minus 3, uh, 18 squared over 2. This will give me a negative number, I think. 9 times 18 minus... 3 times 18 plus 18, 2, I'll get negative, negative 405. Okay, S5, okay, is 9 times 5 minus 3 times 5 squared over 2. I will get, okay, negative 15. So S18 minus S5. Okay, equals to negative 405 minus minus 15. Okay, so I'll get negative 390. And it is possible for the sum of the terms to be a negative number. Okay, follow the step. Jangan abaikan the tanda negative. Okay, so this question has a double whammy. Lah. The first whammy is, uh, kalau kamu guna formula sendiri dan memandai-mandai, Okay, ada formula diberi dan kau tidak pakai formula itu. That's the first whammy. The second whammy is, bila kau nampak S18 equals to negative 405 kan, terus ramai orang akan kencang. Macam mana ini? Jumlah ini negatif. It's possible because the arithmetic progression, mungkin dia menurun. So obviously the total, the sum of the terms will be a negative number. Okay, the point is to follow the rule. S18 minus S5. Even if it gives you a negative number, you still do a double negative, which will be plus. Lah. Okay, then you get negative 394. So don't run away. Uh, just because, uh, sorry, don't terserong atau, you know, stray away from the correct jalan kerja. Just because you see a negative number, and then terus kencang satu dunia. Tiada lah. Okay, this question is actually an easy question. It is an easy four marks. Uh. Ini adalah empat markah yang senang. Berbanding dengan ini tadi, bah. this is a crazy four marks lah. Okay. Kalau setakat empat markah untuk ini, I think it's a little bit crazy lah. Okay. But this is an easy four marks that you should not let go lah. Because formula sudah diberi tau. It is a simple formula. You don't even have to find apa itu A, apa itu D. Okay. So, jangan susahkan benda yang senang lah. Okay, it is given that yada yada are four terms in a geometric progression. Okay, find the value of k. Now, let's assume that 6 uh, is the first term. Okay, and geometric progression, so we want r. r equals to 18 over 6, which is 3. Now, k is the fourth term. Okay, fourth term. So, you can find t4 equals to 6 times 3 to the power of 4 minus 1. Okay, which will give you 162. So, k equals to 162. So, it's 
uh, no biggie lah. Okay. Or even if you do darab tiga, darab tiga kan, because you know 6 to 18 is times 3. So times 3, times 3, times 3, you actually know what is H and K. Okay, so why do they give you this H here, tapi dia suruh kamu cari K. Okay, it's just to throw you off lah. Okay, the point is this, like, you need to understand that in a geometric progression, if it is four consecutive terms, okay, then you know lah, 6, 18 kan, so times 3, 18 times 3 will give you 54. So you know that H is 54. And then you times 3 again, you get 162. So this is K. So you can use this method or you can use this method, it doesn't matter, okay, because it's only two marks lah. Okay, so kalau kamu mau senaraikan, if you want to times 3, times 3, times 3, okay, then what you do is you make sure you list out the whole thing. Okay, to get the full two marks. Lah. Okay, so this is um, this is not really a difficult question. Lah. I think this is an easy question. Okay, the H is just there to throw you off. Lah. Okay, but not a difficult question. Okay, number 7. Lah. Diagram shows the first three sets of squares. Okay, so this is set 1, this is set 2, this is set 3. Okay, dia bukan, one, bukan set 1, set uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Dia bukan set 1, set 5, set 10, bukan begitu. Huh? Okay, they are the first set, second set, third set. Okay, sets of squares lah. So the question is, find the maximum set of squares that can be formed using 580 match sticks. Means uh, if I have 580 match sticks all together, how many sets can I do? Okay, so let's consider this. In the first set, we use four match sticks. Okay, one, two, three, four. In the second set, saya pakai one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16. So 16. Okay, in the third set, just to double confirm, you probably know this is probably an arithmetic progression. Lah, okay, but let's just confirm this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Okay, so this is plus 12, this is plus 12. So that means it is the number of matchsticks that you use is an arithmetic progression. Starts with 4, 16, and then 28. So A equals to 4 and D equals to 12. Okay, so each set na akan bertambah 12 matchsticks. Lah. Every set is going to bertambah 12 matchsticks. So I want to know if I have 580 match sticks all together. Okay, so that means my SN is equals to 580. The total number of match sticks I have is 580. I want to find the value of and how many sets all together. N is the number of sets. Okay, so first set is four match sticks. Second set is 16 match sticks. You already use 20 match sticks. Okay, so what you can do is you can senaraikan lah 4, 16, 28, and then plus 12, 28 plus 12 is 40, plus 12 is 52, plus 12 is 64, and so on lah, until you get a certain number, then you try to add up. Berapa yang sama dengan 580, also can. Okay, but if you're going to use the mathematical method, I'm going to use n over 2 times 2a plus n minus 1d, the formula for sn equals to 580. Now I have a and d, so I substitute lah. n over 2 equals to 2 times 4 plus n minus 1 times 12. Okay, equals to 580. <coughs> okay, I'm going to bring the two, these two, I'm going to bring across. So n times 2 times 4 is 8 plus 12 and minus 12 equals to 580 times 2 will be 1160. Okay, so I need dengan dua lah. Okay, so let me settle the bracket. Huh? This is uh, minus 4 plus 12 and 
equals to 1160, multiply the n in, negative 4n plus 12n squared, uh, minus 1160 equals to uh, 0. Okay, and then this is a matter of EQN. Even if you don't show the Jalan Kerja, also doesn't matter. Just do the EQN and you will get uh, 12, negative 4, negative 1, 1, 6, 0. You get N equals to 10 and N equals to negative 9.7. Okay, obviously this one is reject. Okay, so the number of, this is the final answer, N equals to 10. So the maximum set of squares is n uh, is 10, 10 sets altogether. Set one, uh, sorry, set one, set two, set three, set four, set five, all the way until 10 sets. You get 580 matchsticks. So in terms of difficulty, this is not a difficult question. I would say out of five, this is maybe a three. Okay, three difficulty lah, because this uh, is a hot This will be a hot question. Okay, uh, just requires you to understand the question, but you see the jalan kerja, the jalan kerja is nothing. Okay, jalan kerja is simple jalan kerja lah. Okay, it's just understanding the question saja yang susah sikit. Okay, the price P, number 8 lah, price P in RM of an item and the quantity X sold follow the demand equation P equals to this one. So there is the price of an item which is given here. Tetapi X is antara 0 to 400. Now the cost to produce X is this. C equals to square root of X over 25 plus 600. Now assuming all the product, uh, items produced are sold, calculate the cost of C as a function of price P. Okay. Now when you first read the question, now mesti kau tak fikirkan, apa apa ini soalan kan? It's like, budunya. Okay. Now, basically, what this is asking is um, express C in terms of P only. That means uh, I want C equals to yada yada yada. Di dalamnya mesti ada P sahaja. Saya tidak mahu ada X. Okay, the problem now is in both P and C, kan, kita ada X. So, what do we do? we first take this p function and change it so that we can substitute the x into here. Okay, so p equals to 100 minus 1 over 4x. I move the 100 across, p minus 100 equals to negative 1 over 4x. Multiply everything by negative 4, I'll get negative 4p plus 400 equals to x. And I substitute x into c, which is what I want. c equals to square root of x over 25 plus 600. So I substitute this x, yang saya dapat daripada p, okay, into the c. So that I will get negative 4p plus 400 over 25, this whole thing square root plus 600. Done. All I want is C in terms of P. Saya tidak mau X sudah. I want to get rid of the X. Okay. So, uh, this question is not, not that difficult. It's just if you don't understand what you need to do, uh, then it becomes difficult. Lah. Okay. Tapi kan dia punya jalan kerja is nothing tau. Just kasih masuk P sajalah di dalam C. Tapi you have to get rid of the X. Okay. The cost for producing the item, if the price is 36, that means P sama dengan 36, C sama dengan berapa? This is basically what the question is asking. Okay, not that difficult, right? P sama dengan 36, what do we do? Substitute P equals to 36 in here. Lo. So C equals to negative 4 times 36 plus 400. I know the whole thing square root, but don't worry. Okay, it will resolve itself, 25 plus 600. This one, nothing much, you know. Just use your calculator. Ni. Okay, negative, sorry. Negative 4 times 36 plus 400. You square root, okay, divide by 25 plus by 600. You will get RM 600.64. Done. Okay, it is a, it's not a difficult question, but 
uh, it's not a difficult question to do once you know what you need to do. Okay, and that's the problem lah, probably. Bila orang baca ni kan, dia bilang, apa bahan ni soalan? Like, comes from what chapter, so you don't know. And if you honestly ask me, I also don't know what chapter this is from. <laughs> I want to say functions, uh, it feels like a form 3 question. Lah. Honestly, if you ask me, it feels like a form 3 question. It's just that they they kebatkan the question lah, sampai you don't even know what chapter you're talking about. Okay, so, but you know, if you take some time, sit down and you slowly read through the question, can you figure out that actually there's nothing much to this question. Lah. Okay. Okay, let's talk about this question. Huh? Because this question, I took quite some time. Okay, diagram 9, 9, tiba tiba 9, and then got 14. Huh? So let's, uh, this one shows a rectangular billboard painted with white color. So this is a billboard. So the billboard is of length 3x meters, and the width is 5 minus x meters. Okay, so panjang here 3x, width is 5 minus x. Then you're given 20 cylindrical cans, cylindrical cans of paint. Huh? So come on the cylinder, there's 20 altogether. The radius is 8, the height is 13.43. Okay, are used to paint the billboard and there is 0 0.612 centimeter cube of paints remain in the can. That means huh, in each can, okay, Dia punya volume ini, okay, minus 0 0.612 times 20 yeah, will give you the volume of paint used. Okay, I repeat. Huh? 20 cans, lah, okay. Sorry, every can, once you count the volume of the can, okay, the volume of a cylinder will be pi r squared h. Okay, so you count the volume minus 0 0.612, then you times 20. Then you get the total amount of paint used, which is the same volume as this one. Okay, the, the paint is used to paint the billboard. Now. now, assuming the thickness of the paint is 0 0.3 cm. Now, think about it. Uh, if the paint uh, got a certain thickness, right, means uh, this billboard, Okay, bila kau letak into paint kan, the paint is in the shape of a cuboid. Okay, let me 3 d it it. Nah. So, this is the billboard. Okay, the length is 3x. This is 5 minus x. And since there is a coat of paint, okay, so this ketinggian is 0 0.6, sorry, uh, 0 0.3, okay, cm. The thickness is 0 0.3 cm. Okay, so you are saying uh, that the volume of the paint okay, on the billboard is the same as the volume of the paint that you used. Okay, then you find out what is the value of x. Lah. Okay, so you understand the situation. The volume of the paint on the billboard, of course, must be the same as the volume of paint that you used okay, are from the can. Okay, it's just that the volume of paint on the billboard is a cuboid shape, cuboid la. Okay, and the volume of the paint in the cylindrical can is a cylinder. Okay, so that's problem number one. Second problem is they are giving you one in meter and then one in centimeter. Okay, this is a this is a. Uh, I was telling another student yesterday, this is a ridiculous question. Lah. Honestly, if you ask me, it's a ridiculous question. It's already so difficult. Lah. You make things worse lah, by having different units. One is in meter, one is in centimeter. You know? So it's like, uh, yeah, I know. If you want to find ways to torture and make students, this is one of the ways to do it. To do it lah. Okay, you give them one punch on the left and then one punch on the right. But lemal yiha based on the right can you give them another punch from the bottom. Okay, give them an uppercut. Lah. It's a total KO question. Lah, but cannot, it's possible to do. So I think since most of everything uh, is in centimeters, uh, we need to change the billboard length and the width uh, to centimeter. So changing from meter to centimeter, okay, is times 100. So that means this will be 3x uh, will become 300x. Okay, changed from meter to centimeter. That just times 100. Uh. Okay, this one will be 500 
minus 100x. Okay, I change the 5 to 500, I change the x to 100x. Okay, so that is, everything is in centimeters. Okay, so I'm going to do this in different colors. Huh? Volume of billboard paint. Okay, volume of billboard paint will be 300x times 500 minus 100x times, what is the thickness? 0 0.3. Okay, uh, let me settle this first. This will be 150000x minus 3 and 4 zeros x squared times 0 0.3. Okay, you need to set that up. Okay, so I get this and this. Okay, so, so after that, I will get 45000x minus 9000x squared. Okay, so this is the volume of billboard paint that I use. Okay, now the volume of can paint. Okay, so the can paint, uh, so one can is pi r squared h, okay, minus 0 0.612. Okay, so pi is 3.142, r is uh, 8, 8 squared, the height is 13.43. Okay, minus 0 0.612. Uh, sorry, one first, uh, one can, uh, one can. I count one can first because uh, I got no space. Uh, if you got space, you can write. So 3.142 times 8 times 8 times 13.43 minus 0 0.612. So I will get about 2700. Okay, I'm going to round it off because it's annoying. If I'm going to use the 99999, it's very annoying. So 20 cans will be. 2700 times 20. Okay, will give me 54000. So the equation here is the blue color and the green color must be the same because I transfer from the can to the billboard. Lah. Therefore, 45000x minus 9000x squared equals to 54000. Okay. And of course, you want to find the values of x, Makan. Okay, count, calculate the values of x. So I will get, uh, let me write this out nicely x squared plus 45000 x minus 54000 equals to 0. Okay, the amount of zeros are annoying, but anyway, you can still use EQN. Uh, So you will get x equals to 2 and x equals to 3. Final answer. Okay. Yeah, so be very careful with this now. After you do this, actually you get 2699.9999, which is like Bodo la kan kalau kamu pakai semua 9999. So that's why I just change it to 2700. It just makes things much more simpler. La. Okay. So uh, actually, in terms of the Jalan Kerja, also not that much. It's just understanding the question is a real killer. Lah. Okay, then of course you have to consider that one is in meter, one is in centimeter. Kan? So this one out of a difficulty of five, I would say this is a five. Okay, this is a five just because there's a double whammy. Lah. Okay, so, so yeah. Okay, so if you can answer this, okay, really good for you. Okay, but if you can't, it's okay. Let's we'll just work through it together. Lah. Okay, number 10. Diagram 10 shows the location of a school hall, a canteen, and a science lab of SMK Jujur. Okay, the school hall, canteen, and science lab are equidistant to one another. Okay, dalam bahasa Melayu is jarak sama. That means, uh, what is trying to tell you is that, okay, if you take a look at this one. Uh, so, this is same as this is same as this. Okay, so 5Q equals to 15R and also is equals to 3 to the power of P. 
A, sorry, sorry. Okay, sorry, I'm going to write this a bit later. Okay. So, express R in the form of B and Q. Okay, R in the form of P and Q. So, uh, this is an index question. Again, uh, another index question. And it involves, you know, three index, which is all equal to one another. So, you can actually change it so that it's equals to, you know, one another. Lah. So, what I can do is, let me start with the two smallest ones first. Lah. Okay. So, let's say I have 5 to the power of Q. Equals to 3 to the power of P. Somebody's mic is on. Okay. 5 to the power of Q equals to 3 to the power of P. Okay. Now, what I can do over here is I can bring the P across. Okay. When I bring the P across, what I'm doing is I'm multiplying with 1 over P. Okay, so, so that saya hilangkan P di sebelah sini. I multiply the power with 1 over P. So I will get 5Q multiplied by 1 over P equals to 3P multiplied by 1 over P. And what happens over here is I will get the number 3 alone and 5Q over P. Okay. This is what. And so the reason why I want to do this, lah, the reason why I want to do this is now let me do let me do 5q equals to 15r. Okay, equals to 15r. So what happens over here is I can actually write 15 as 5r times 3 to the power of r. Because 15 is 5 times 3. Okay? And since I know that 3 is equals to 5 to the power of Q over P, I can substitute the 3 over here, which I will get 5Q equals to 5 to the power of R times 5 to the power of Q over P multiplied by R. Okay. So, kenapa saya mau buat begini ya? Saya mau buat begini so that I can get rid of the number 5. When everything is number 5 kan, I can get rid of number 5. Can I do the same and use number 3? Can. I'm just showing you one. There are two possible ways. Three, sorry. There are three possible ways to answer this question. Okay. And I think this is the easiest for me lah. Saya kasih semua sama dengan lima. Okay. But in order for you to understand what is going on lah, the basics of your index must be very good. Lah. Okay, I in this I can akui lah. Okay, your index and your basics has to be very good. You must know how to manipulate the indices uh, around. Okay, and that's a very it's a very important skill uh, if you want to answer this question. Okay, kamu kena tahu macam mana mau manipulate the index. Because when I do this, what I will get is 5 to the power of Q equals to 5 to the power of R. R Okay, times 5 to the power of QR over P. Now, according to index rule, this will give me 5 to the power of Q equals to 5 to the power of R plus QR over P. Since both are the same 5s, I can say Q equals to R plus QR over P. So, Alan is express R. That means I want R equals to yada, yada, yada lah. Okay, so no worry. Let us make this as one. Ah. Sebelah kanan sebagai satu. So over P, this will be PR plus QR. Okay, I, sub, I factorize the R out. So I'll get Q equals to, sorry, I'm going to bring the P up. Lah. PQ equals to P plus QR. And I will get R equals to PQ over P plus Q. Okay, this will be my final answer. No matter how you do it, lah, whether you use 5 or you use 3 or you even use 15, 15 is quite madness, lah, but you can. Okay, whether you use 5 or 3 or 15, you will get the same expression. R equals to PQ over P plus Q. Okay, but as I said before, in order for you to really answer this question well, lah, you need to know how to manipulate the indices around. Itu yang susah. Okay, so kalau 
Okay, if you still don't remember the index uh, laws, uh, the three laws of indices, can, then this is a difficult question. Okay, this would be not even a five, this is a six or seven. Okay, but if you know the index indices law, okay, and then you then this would be maybe a four, okay, a difficulty of four. Lah. Okay, you just need to know how to manipulate the indices around to JS resuscitate. Okay, so this will be our final answer. Huh? Okay, question 11. Uh, diagram 11 shows a long bamboo ladder PQ which is leaning against the wall. Okay, then they say express Y in terms of X. Tiba tiba other Y than X. Okay, so this is an interesting thing. Huh? Here you have X, Y and this is X. So, you know, when you see a straight line and you see this weird, weird looking kind of axis kind, you kind of know that this is a linear law question. Okay. Linear law question, yang diorang kasi keban. Okay. Now, this is interesting. Huh? If this is 12 units, then you know that this coordinate over here is 12 and 0. And since this is 6 units, then you know that this is 0 and 0. 6. Okay, so if I'm going to form the, the equation, first of all, I have to count the gradient. Lah. Okay, so the gradient, lah, lepas kau kira ni, 6 minus 0, 0 minus 12, you get negative 1 over 2. Yeah, okay, negative 1 over 2. And then my C is equals to 6 lah, because here, ma, here is 6. Makan. So what is my equation? My linear equation, okay, the linear equation will be xy equals to negative 1 over 2 x plus 6. Tapi, soalan minta express y, obviously. Lah. So I just want this y, makan. So I bring the x across, okay. Bahagi semua dengan x, I will get y equals to negative 1 over 2 plus 6 over x. Final answer. Yeah, because x divided by x would be negative 1 over 2. Let's just cast thing else in general. Okay. Now, find the value of k. Okay, value of k is when x equals to 9. x, y equals to k. Okay, so this is the result. So, we substitute in this formula. Jangan kau sebok sebok dengan that formula. So, x, y equals to k. So k equals to negative half x. Sorry, x is what? X is 9. Okay, 9 plus 6. Okay, and this is quite easily calculated. Uh, negative 1 over 2 times 9 plus 6 will give me 3 over 2. Done. Okay. So in terms of difficulty, this is a 2. Okay, I would say this is a 2 out of 5 because kalau saya buang, if I throw away this wall, okay, it just basically is the same question lah, kan? Pernah kita nampak. Okay, x, y, and then uh, p, and then saya bagi koordinat ni, saya bagi koordinat ni, saya bagi koordinat ni. Okay, all I have to do is just throw the wall away. And it is basically a linear law question. Okay, nothing... Difficult over there. Lah. Okay, question, <laughs> question 12. Okay, diagram 12 shows two circles intersect at C, D, A, and D at the center of the two circles. Okay, so this is one center and this is one center. Okay, each with a radius of 6 centimeters respectively. So the radius is 6. Okay, by using pi equals to 3.142, find the angle of C, B, D. Okay, this one. Okay, now the angle of C, B, D, this will be 6 cm, obviously 6 cm. Okay, and from here to here, okay, is something that we don't know. Lah. Okay, but what we do know is from, sorry, what we do know is since these are two centers, okay, that means uh, that this one, okay, over here, this is a halfway point. Okay, this is a halfway point. So if I'm going to draw the angle, uh, sorry, the triangle, 
sorry, I'm going to change this one. I'm going to push it over here. Lah. So this is the angle we want to find. Okay, half of the angle lah yang kita mau cari. Now, saya tahu ini adalah 6. Dan saya tahu ini adalah, since this whole thing is 6 and this is a halfway mark, so this will be 3. So how do I find the angle of theta? So this will be cos theta equals to 3 over 6. And theta will give me 60 degrees. So if this is 60 degrees, CBD, okay, CBD will be 120 degrees. 120 degrees change to radian is 2.095, okay, radian, which is the answer for A. Okay, so this is a, well, you will see it's a pretty standard one. Lah. Okay, since there are two intersecting and since that both are the center, so the corner for both, okay, will be a half will, will be a perpendicular bisector. Okay, that's a standard one. Lah. All right, I'm going to wrap this off because I need this space uh, to show you the next question. So, the area of the shaded region, uh, this is pretty doink. Lah. Okay, let's think about this. Uh. Now, let's say, let, let's say, let's, let's say I draw this. Uh, okay, if I draw the chord over here, okay, I can actually count this one. Lah. Okay, I can actually count this one. So this will give me, uh, this one will be A equals to 1 over 2 R squared theta minus sine theta. Okay, this is the particular calculation. Okay, so if I count 1 over 2, 6 squared, theta is 2.095 minus sine 120. Okay, since the angle uh, of CBD is uh, 120. <laughs> Okay, so I will get 2.095 minus sine 120 times 6 times 6 times 2. I will get about 22.1215 cm squared. Okay, now since both the circles are, are identical, okay, and the they intersect, they have the same, this one can, means now, uh, kalau sini adalah 22.1215, this side, is also 22.1215. Okay, which means uh, I can calculate the area of this shaded region, the one I'm going to mark in yellow. I can count this area. Okay, which is the area of the whole circle minus the red and then minus the blue. Okay, so the area of yellow. Uh, Sorry, I have to use color because I don't I don't know how to write this. So it's pi r squared. Okay, minus 22.1215 minus 22.1215. Okay, so this is uh pi r squared uh, 3.142 times 6 times 6. So it'll be 113.112 minus 22.1215 minus 22.1215. Okay, I'll get Sixty-eight point eight six nine, but that's just the area of the yellow. What about the other side? Okay, again, since these two circles are the same circles, okay, same type of circle, and they intersect, you know, they intersect at C and D. Yeah, that means now uh, this yellow part and this part over here is the same area. Okay, that means I can say that the area of the shaded region is the yellow area times 2. So 68.869 times 2. Which should give me 137.738 centimeter squared. Okay, that's how you would answer this question. This is a good question actually. Um, maybe difficulty of 4. Okay, four out of five. Um, the only, probably the difficult part would be, number one, if you did not identify that this is a perpendicular bisector, okay, which means that you get this three, 
then it's very difficult to get 120 degrees. Lah. That's number one. Then of course, the other part is most, okay, most students, uh, uh, what we'll do is they will count the, the two circle punya area. Okay, so 2 pi r squared and then minus the 22.1215 twice, which is actually wrong. Okay, you have to count one side and then assume that the other side, not even assume, memang the other side is the same area. You count one area, you just have to multiply two because it's the same concept. Okay, notice, notice uh, how I counted this yellow color area. It's the whole circle minus the two segments, the red segment and the blue segment. Okay, if you do it on the other side, you will also do the same thing. The whole circle minus the two segments. Okay, so yeah, so that's the tough part about this question. <laughs> okay, all right, let's do, okay, fine. Let's do one last question before we take a break. Huh? This question, huh? okay, this question, uh, since this video is going to go on YouTube huh, and it's going to be a little bit public, I would say, I think this question is a little bit out of your syllabus. It's not really in your syllabus, lah, okay? But it, uh, um, I wouldn't ask this question for somebody who is taking SPM, lah, okay? This is really out of your syllabus, but I think it's such a good question uh, that I cannot like, okay, let's skip this question. We must do. Okay, we must do. Okay, even though if it's out of the syllabus, because mana tahu lah kan? Mana tahu lah. Okay, so you have this 6 modulus y plus 2 modulus y. 6 modulus x plus 2 modulus y equals to 18. And then they ask you to find the area of the enclosed uh, you know, region by this equation. So annoying. Okay, what this means uh, okay, is you can have 6x plus 2y equals to 18. First equation. Second equation is negative 6x plus 2y equals to 18. Third equation is 6x minus 2y equals to 18. And the last equation is minus 6x minus 2y equals to 18. This is basically what the modulus means. It can have two possible positive values and two possible negative values. Okay, so you will have four equations over here. Okay, now if you have four equations over here, let me mark this out now. Let's find the intersects now. Okay, so this one now, the intersect is when x equals to zero, y equals to nine. This one is when y equals to zero, okay, x equals to three. I'm doing this very fast now because uh, if you understand this, go ahead. If you don't understand this, you can totally skip this question. Lah, okay? Because number one, it's really out of your syllabus. I don't think they will ask these kind of questions in SPM because it's so ridiculously out of your syllabus. Okay? And yet, it's not really out. Lah, okay? It is there, but it's not really not there. Okay? But it's so good that we need to answer this. Okay, So this is one set of equations. Another one is over here, when x equals to 0, y equals to 9. Same thing. Okay, when y equals to 0, x is equals to negative 3. Okay, over here, when x equals to 0, y equals to negative 9. When y equals to 0, x equals to 3. Okay, and then this one, lastly, 0, negative 9, and negative 3, and 0. Okay, oh dear, sorry, I have done... I have overdone this. Okay, sorry. Zero, I should do this lah kan? So the coordinate. Okay, so let's plot this now. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Okay, uh, you know what, let me plot this here. So I know that all the points that I have, okay, is actually just zero, three, and nine, and negative nine, just one. Okay, so all the x values are 3, negative 3. So I'm going to do 3, negative 3. And then here will be 9, and then negative 9. And if you find that 0, 9, 3, 0, 0, 9, 3, 0, this is the first equation. Okay, this is the first equation. Next one is 0, 9, negative 3, 0. 
which is here. This is the second equation. Over here is this one, and this one is the last one. Okay. Basically, this question is find the area of this square. Okay, but they don't give you the coordinates. They give you the equation to find the coordinates. Okay, but the area actually is not that difficult, right? It's 1 over 2. Okay, let me arrange this. Uh, so this is uh, 0 and 9. This is 3 and 0. This is neg 0 and negative 9. And this is negative 3 and 0. So we go one full circle, lah. 0, 9, 3, 0, 0, negative 9, negative 3, 0, and 0, 9. Okay, don't forget to repeat the first uh, coordinate. Okay, then all you have to do is just calculate this. No? Okay, yada, yada, yada. I can't remember what's the answer. Huh? I'll give the answer in a while. Uh, but this is the answer. Uh, this is how you would get it. So actually, the area part uh, is the easy part. Uh. Okay, it is forming this, finding all these coordinates to form the polygon. Uh, that's the hard part, okay, which is given by this one. Which is why I said this question is in your syllabus, but it's not really in your syllabus. Uh, sebab yang ini kan, 6 modulus x plus 2 modulus y equals to 18 is actually not really in your syllabus. Uh. Yeah. I, I mean, I can't see it anywhere in your syllabus uh, that will justify this question. Lah. Okay. But because it is a question that has been given in the trial exam paper, I think it's good that you also learn this. Lah. Okay. Uh, because it's actually not that difficult to calculate. Lah. Calculation tidak susah. Mau dapat ini, ini yang susah. I understand. I totally understand. Okay. I totally understand. But this will be how we would solve this question. Okay, so let's take a three minute break. Okay, uh, let me take a drink of water and then uh, when I come back, uh, I will show you. Actually, I can show you the answer, uh, but I will show you the answer when I come back. Okay, so I'll pause the video and I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, uh, hi everyone, welcome back. So the answer to just now question uh, is this uh, 54 unit squared. Okay, uh, 54 unit squared. Um, but as I said, lah, the calculation to this question is not actually that difficult. It's just more dapatkan into equations. Yeah. Okay, getting that, <laughs> that that crazy four equations is kind of tough. Lah. Okay, so oh yeah. <clears throat> All right, let's go to question number four. Okay, question uh, 14. Uh, 14 shows a straight line PQ which divides the line segment joining points A and B in the ratio of 3 to 2. That means uh, this line over here, this ratio is 3 and this ratio is 2. It doesn't look like it. I know it doesn't look like it. But because A came first, uh, okay, so this side is 3 and that side is 2. It's, yeah, so the lesson that needs to be learned here is don't look at the diagram, but look at the question. Okay, given the equation of this is 2x plus y equals to k, express m in terms of k. So we need to express this. Lah. Okay, let's take a look. slow, 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 slow. Okay, now what we can do is we can find, uh, we can find this to take. Okay, we can find this dot because there's a ratio over there. Lah. Okay, so the x coordinate for this, I'm going to call this the x coordinate and the y coordinate. Nah. Okay, so the x coordinate for this will be 3 times 2 will be 6 plus 2 times 1. 2 times 1 is 2 over 3 plus 2 is 5. So the x coordinate is actually 8 over 5. Okay, for this one. The y coordinate will be 3 times m. Okay, so 3m, 2 times 1, plus 2 over 5. And I can't do much over here. Okay, so I can simplify because there's the letter m over there. Okay, doesn't matter. But since this x and y lies on pq, therefore I can sub the x and the y over here. Okay, remember our final answer is not to find a number, it's just to find an expression. 
Okay, which is a very common question in SPM. Uh, we find that nowadays, this suruh kamu express this, express this, express this. So always have in mind, kalau express M in terms of K, our final answer must be M equals to yada, yada, yada lah. Di dalamnya somewhere, got K somewhere. Okay, but the most important is M equals to. That's our final answer. Okay, so we can substitute the X and the Y into the equation. So, 2x plus y equals to k. I substitute the x in here, I'll get 2, 8 over 5 plus, the y comes over here, 3m plus 2 over 5 equals to k. Now the reason, as I said, why I can do this is because this point x and y terletak pada garis ini, okay, which is given by this equation. Okay, that's why I can do it. So, this will be 16 over 5 plus 3m plus 2 over 5 equals to k. Let me bring the 5 up since both of it is over 5. So it's about near night So 16 plus 3m plus 2 equals to 5k. Okay, 16 plus 2 is 18 plus 3m equals to 5k. I will get 3m equals to 5k minus 18 and finally m equals to 5k minus 18 over 3. This is where I will stop lah because I can't do much. I already expressed m in terms of k. Under k somewhere inside. Totally fine. Okay. So this is uh, not a difficult question except that if you are like me, okay, if you are like me, yeah, when I saw this for the first time, okay, I honestly thought that this was 3 and this was 2 because it looks like that. Okay. But when I checked again, okay, and of course I checked the answer. Lah. When I checked again, I realized that this was A first and then B. That means from A to the center is 3 and then from the B to the center is 2. It doesn't look like it, right? I know, it's so ridiculous that it doesn't look like it, but there you go. Okay, another proof that reading the question is more important than looking at the diagram. The diagram is just a visual aid. Okay, but the question instruction is more important. It is the correct one. So even if the picture is wrong and is ridiculous, okay, the question is still correct. Okay, question 15. So diagram 15 shows an aircraft carrier and two of its battleships. The position of battleship A, B and the enemy's battleship, I'm going to call this E. Uh, I'm going to call this E. Okay, is 3, 2, 4, 5 and 5, 7, assuming that the aircraft carrier is the origin. Okay, A, B and E. Which means that I can say that OA equals to 3I plus 2J or B is equals to 4i plus 5j and OE is equals to 5i plus 7j. Okay, according to your question. Now, battleship A releases a torpedo towards its enemy. Chung over here. Okay, determine whether battleship B is hit. Oh, that's such a good question. Actually, it's really good. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm always very excited with really good maths questions that is not so ridiculously over the top. Lah. Okay, but this is one of them. Now, of course, we have to we have to assume that the torpedo moves in a straight line. Lah. They bukan, uh, obviously, in real life, the torpedo doesn't move in a straight line. Okay, there's friction and blah blah blah. But this is the real, this is the fake world. Uh, so we just assume that everything moves in a straight line. But of course, we have to prove the answer mathematically. So what happens uh, if you see this kind of question and you, for the life of you, and you don't know how to answer this question. Okay, so you will not be able to get the three marks now, of course. But the one mark uh, is just state whether the battleship has been hit or not. Okay, you will get one mark. Kalau dia kena atau tidak kena. So you have to take a 50-50 chance to see if you can get that one mark. Oh, mungkin dia kena lah, mungkin dia tidak kena lah. Okay, the way I draw kan, macam tidak kena. But what if the torpedo, dia fire from here? 
Kena lah bahkan. <laughs> okay, so I don't know. I cannot determine from the picture whether it will kena lah. Okay, I have to prove it mathematically. So if you really don't know, just take a shot in the dark and take a 50-50 chance. Okay, you either get the mark or you don't get the mark. But don't skip the question. Just try to give an answer. Yes, it will hit Battleship B. No, it won't hit Battleship B. Either one of these is one mark. Okay, but let's prove this mathematically. Now, the torpedo to the enemy Battleship uh, is given by the vector AE. Okay, so AE will be AO plus OE, okay, of which both you have over here. So AO is negative 3 to, sorry, uh, I'm going to write this in, uh, in this one. And then uh, OE is 5 and 7. That's why I'm going to to this I and J. Uh. So this will give me 2 and 5. Okay, or 2I plus 5J. Okay, that's AE. Now, if B is to be hit, okay, kalau B akan terkena, so I have to determine the vector of AB first lah. Okay, so AB will be equals to AO plus OB. Okay, AO is again negative 3, negative 2. Yeah, and OB is 4 and 5. 4 and 5. So this will give me 1 and 3. Okay, which is I plus 3J. Okay, now if the torpedo is going to hit battleship B, uh, means uh, it is on the same line. It is what we say collinear. This is actually a collinear question. Okay, which now if two, this one is collinear, kan? I can say the AE equals to lambda AB. The standard for collinear. Lah. Okay, that means uh, 2i plus 5j equals to lambda i plus 3j. Okay, or lambda i plus 3 lambda j. Okay, okay fine. You don't have to use lambda if you don't want. I can use another letter. Lah. Uh, let me use the letter k. Okay, k. ki plus 3kj. Okay, now if it is collinear, when I compare the vectors, uh, I will get the same k value. Okay, so 2i equals to ki. k equals to 2. Okay, on this side, 5, 5j equals to 3kj. I will get k equals to 5 over 3. So we find that the k values are not the same. Okay, since the k values are not the same, therefore the torpedo won't hit. Okay, won't hit battleship B. Alamak, battleship B. Because it is not collinear. Okay, dari segi matematik, uh, we find that AE and AB are not collinear. Bukan parallel, uh, okay? they are not collinear. Since they are not collinear, that means uh, B, the, the, the torpedo kan tidak akan kena battleship B. Lah. Battleship B will be somewhere far away. Okay, If you find the value of K is the same, uh, okay, then it is collinear. So actually, this question is a collinear question. Cuma dia ubah kasi jadi hots lah. Okay, but the steps to doing a collinear question is the same. Okay, you have two vectors and you kasi sama tetapi kau letak satu huruf. And then you compare the i and the j. I mean, you compare the different different vectors to get the, the, the value of k lah. If the value of k is the same, then it is collinear. If the value of k is different, then it is not collinear. Okay, so this is a standard collinear question. Cuma, as I said lah, okay, it has been, it has been k-butted. 
Okay, it has been K butted uh, to this one. But this is such a good question, lah, really, honestly. If you ask me, Khan, it's such a good question. <laughs> okay. Question 16. Vector A, B are parallel vectors by an opposite direction given 2K minus HA equals to 5B. Okay, this is actually a no-brainer. Huh? If this is a parallel vector by an opposite direction, I can say that 2K minus H equals to negative 5. Just different direction. Okay, I can totally omit the magnitude, okay, if I want. Uh, yeah, actually, I can totally ignore the magnitude. Okay, 2K minus H, ini nombor sahaja. Okay, uh, yeah. So, what I will get is, I want to express K in terms of H. Okay, so I will get 2K equals to negative 5 plus H. K equals to negative 5 plus H over 2. Done. Okay, the only, the only thing that is difficult about this question is if you fail to look at the words opposite direction. Lah. Opposite direction means salah satu mesti negative. So I can also do, if I want, lah, I can also do negative 2K minus H equals to 5. Boleh juga. You get the same answer. Okay, 2k minus h equals to negative 5. You get 2k equals to negative 5 plus h. And you get the same answer again. Okay, salah satu mesti negative dan salah satu mesti positive. That's the meaning of opposite direction. Now, the other part where most people will be confused is this one. Lah. Kenapa ni ada magnitude ni, ada modulus? Okay, doesn't mean anything. It's just a modulus which shows the magnitude. Okay, I can also write this uh, in like this now. 2K minus HA equals to 5B. Saya boleh tulis begini juga. It's the same thing. Okay, cuma they write, they write that one. Okay, just to differentiate whether you know what is the meaning of a magnitude. Lah. Okay, magnitude. So, nothing much in this question. Uh, cuma fahaman vector sahaja. Now, while measuring the radius of a sphere, Kamal okay, made a 3% of error. Okay, now we have seen this question uh, either last week or two weeks ago. Okay, where they give this 3% of an error. So this is a del R. Uh, okay, del R is 3 over 100 R. Okay, so sorry. 3 over 100 R. 3% of the R punya error because they measure the radius. Okay, find the percentage of error in the volume of the sphere. Okay, so we will come to that in a while. This is actually, whenever you see percent, okay, and then suddenly you see this volume gun, this is kind of a differentiation question. Okay, first I need to find the small change in V, which is dV dr value times del r okay so this is what i want to find so let's start from here so the v is given as 4 over 3 pi r cube so dv dr equals to 4 pi r squared okay and sadly i don't know what is the value of r lah. okay so let's not worry about this so that means my del v is 4 pi r squared times 3 over 100 R, which is 12 over 100 pi R cube. Okay, so the percentage of error uh, in the volume okay, is del V divided by V times 100. Okay, so del V is 12 over 100 pi r cube over 4 over 3 pi r cube, okay, times 100. So when you do the calculator, 12 over 100 divided by 4, sorry, 4 over 3 times 100 will be 9%. Okay, um, I would say that this is maybe a difficulty of four because there's um, it is a very rarely asked question. I I think 
I've only seen this question asked in trial papers. I've never seen this question asked in SPM before. Okay, but uh, there is a trial paper before this uh, that also asks percentage of error. Okay, uh, that also give a percentage of error. Tapi dia tidak suruh kamu cari the percentage of error again lah. Okay, so which makes this Kedah question quite unique lah. They ask you to calculate the percentage of error. Okay, this is not a formula. It means just for how much percentage lah. Percentage of error is how much is the deviation over the actual volume times 100. Okay, and all this whole while they don't give the R because at the end of the day, the pi R cube will cancel itself. Okay, cuma dia guna differentiation untuk kira ini. Okay. Alright. Question 18. And now we find that from question 18 onwards, uh, most of the questions are kind of the standard questions, Sudala. Okay, um, I think so. Yeah. Most of the questions are kind of the standard questions. Uh, nothing really special. Uh, so let's get down to it. Uh. So we have 1 to 4. Uh, 1 to 4 of gx equals to p. So you have this. So obviously when you do this, you take out the numbers first. Uh. Hey, apa ini, siyo? Let me try again. So I will have Am I doing okay? So, kenapa saya punya warna yang berubah? Four to one of three gx over five dx. The first thing you do is always take out the number first. Choose three over five, then you do four to one of gx dx. Now you're given one to four, so if you terbalikkan four to one, this will give you three over five times negative. Okay, because if 1 to 4 is P, three, uh, 4 to 1 will be negative P. So this will be negative 3P over 5. B, 1 to 4 of 4 plus GX. Okay, DX. This one, because there's a plus, so you separate it. So it will be 1 to 4 of 4 DX plus 1 to 4 of GX DX. Okay, this one we know is equals to P, so no problem. So ini sajalah. So integration of 4 will give you 4X, okay, 1 to 4 plus P. So this will give you 16 minus 4 plus P, which should be 12 plus P. Nothing special lah in this question. Nah. This, question is a, this question is a pretty standard integration questions. Usually the first question, they akan terbalikkan the limit. Okay, so Alan dia bagi 1 to 4, but the first question usually is they will switch the 4 to 1. Lah. And then they will give you a number, you just chuck out the number outside, put in the negative P. The second question is usually one that involves a very simple integration. Change the 4 to 4x, substitute the 4 in, minus it out, and then you just plus P. Okay, so nothing special. See this question. I like to say the words nothing special because it's very routine. Lah. Okay, this is a very routine question. Um, you know, keep practicing and you should be able to do this. Okay, diagram shows a curve of y equals to 5x, uh, 5 over x squared. They say the area of A is equal to the area of region B. This is, since this is a curve and you're given the this one can, so the integration of 5 over x squared from 1 to k. Okay, that's the area under that region, this one. This one is the integration of 5 over x squared from k to 5. And they say that the area is equal. Okay, so let's do it separately. Huh? We always do it separately, then we bring it together at the end. So integration of 1 to k uh, 5 over x squared. So we integrate, when we integrate this, uh, you know what, let me make it simpler. This is 5x to the power negative 2, bahkan. Okay, when we integrate this, we will get 5x to the power of negative 1. Kita tambah 1. Okay, over negative 1. From 1 to k. Okay, let me simplify this. This will become 5 over x negative 5 over x, okay, from 1 to k. 
Now, obviously, this integration and this integration is the same. Lah. Okay, so I can say that negative 5 over x from 1 to k equals to negative 5 over x from k to 5. Okay, since the area is the same. Okay, so negative 5 over k minus negative 5 over 1 equals to negative 5 over 5 minus negative 5 over k. Okay, let me get rid of the negatives now because it's so annoying. Negative 5 over k plus 5 equals to, this is negative 1 plus 5 over k. Okay. I bring, let me bring this across. Okay, I bring this over here. So this will be negative 5 minus 5 with negative 10 over k equals to minus 1 minus 5 is minus 6. Okay, so I will get k equals to 5 over 3. This will be my final answer. 5 over 3 or 3 over 5? Mm, 5 over 3, I think. Yeah, 5 over 3. Okay, 5 over 3, or if you want to do in uh, decimal, I don't suggest that 5 over 3 is fine. Okay, so this question is also not really something out of the ordinary. Okay, it's a pretty standard question. Okay, not if you have done enough integration questions, this should be okay. Okay, all right, question 20. Probability of red one being chosen to participate is 4 over 5. Kumar is K. Okay, we don't know. Now, the probability that none of them are chosen is 1 over 15. Okay, so we can find the value of K over here. Now, kalau Ridwan kena pilih is 4 over 5, dia tidak kena pilih is 1 over 5. Kan? Because Ridwan is Ridwan, Kumar is Kumar. Okay, they got nothing to do with one another. Okay, now Kumar kena pilih is K. So, Kumar tidak kena pilih will be 1 minus K. Kan? So, the probability that none of them are chosen uh, means Redwan tidak kena pilih, Kumar pun tidak kena pilih is 1 over 5 times 1 minus K equals to 1 over 15. That's the basics of this. Okay, 1 over 15 is 2 2 tidak kena pilih. So, Ridwan tidak kena pilih 1 over 5. Kumar tidak kena pilih is 1 minus K. So, we can find 1 minus K. We can find K lah. Okay, basically, we can find K from here. So, 1 minus K equals to multiply by 5, huh? 5 over 15. Okay, so you get K equals to 1 minus 5 over 15. You get 2 over 3. Okay, you get k equals to 2 over 3. Okay, so the probability that only one of them is chosen. Okay, now one of them is chosen means Ridwan kena pilih, Kumar tidak. And Kumar kena pilih, Ridwan tidak. Okay, so the first situation now is Ridwan, yes, Kumar, no. Okay, the second situation is Redwan no, Kumar yes. Okay, so Redwan kena pilih is uh, how much? 4 over 5. Kumar tidak kena pilih is 1 over 3. What do we do? We multiply. Okay, Redwan tidak kena pilih is 1 over 5. Kumar kena pilih is 2 over 3. Also, we multiply. So, what you get is 4 over 15. This is 2 over 15. So you add them both together. So the probability is 4 over 15 plus 2 over 15 equals 2 4 over 15 plus 2 over 15. Simplified lah, 2 over 5. Final answer. Okay. Also, nothing special in this question. Uh, it's just that uh, maybe the trick lah, okay, maybe the trick is a lot of people would think that Redwan and Kumar are connected. So, color Redwan is 4 over 5, thus Kumar is 1 over 5. Begitu. Tak boleh, ya? Cannot. They are mutually exclusive. They have nothing to do with one another. So, that's why you can multiply and then you can add on top of it together. Okay, so be very careful with this. Huh? 
Okay, question number 21 is a trigonometry question. Okay, uh, and you're given that y equals to fx, amplitude is 2, and you're given this line over here, y equals to half. Now find all the values of x when the straight line touches the function, this one. So this function, of course, you have to identify the function. Now, what is this function? This is y equals to 2 sine 2x. Amplitude is 2. And there are two cycles in 2 pi. 2 pi bar. Mm, yeah, 2 pi. Okay, two cycles in 2 pi. That means uh, over here, you are getting 2 sine 2x equals to half. Y equals to half. Y equals to 2 sine 2x. Okay, so you get 2 sine 2x equals to half. So sine 2x equals to 1 over 4. Okay, so when you shift sign, you will get 2x, shift sign 0 0.25 will be 14.4775. Now, before you find the value of x, uh, you need to find all the possible values of 2x first. Okay, never, never jump to x and then only find the value. No, uh, find the, all the possible values of 2x first. Now, since this is positive, uh, Okay, since this is positive, sine 2x is a positive value. So we're talking quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. All science teachers, yeah. Okay, so quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. Now, if we're talking quadrant 1 and quadrant 2, color 0 until x until 360, since our angle is 2x, so we need to find all the possible values until 720. Okay, so we're talking four values all together. Quadrant 1, quadrant 2, and then quadrant 1 the second time, and quadrant 2 the second time. So this is quadrant 1, obviously. Okay, quadrant 2 will be 180 minus 14.4775, which will give you 165.5225. Okay, then that is the first cycle. Because we are having two cycles, so you got to add another one. So you get 360. Okay, the third angle will be 360 plus 14.4775, which is 374.4775. Okay, and the last cycle, sorry, the last half. Huh? So this is one cycle, 360 degrees. Second cycle will be 360 plus another 180, but minus the basic angle of 14. So this will be 360 plus 180 is 540 minus 14.4775, which will give you 525.5225. So you will get 2x equals to these four angles. Yeah, I'm putting 14 14.4775, 165.5225, 374.4775, and 525.5225. Banyak number. So you finally can get the four values of x. Okay, divide everything by two. Lah. Oh dear. Okay, so this is 262.761. I don't know why I'm doing from the last to the first. Okay, 165.5225 divided by 2 is 82.761. And the last, <laughs> the last one is 14.475 divided by 2. Okay, 7.239. Okay, lah, bagi tiga lah, tiga tu apa apa Okay, this will be my final four answers. Okay, um. Difficulty maybe three, three or four. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I wouldn't say there's anything really that difficult about this question. Chuma, if you have forgotten how to do how to do two x angles, uh, two times angle, second cycle angle, uh, it is like you may lose one or two marks now uh, because most people will get this answer and then this answer. Then they forget there's a second round. Okay, so just remember that. Uh, for almost any trigonometric function, uh, 
If it's one cycle, uh, there's two answers. If there's two cycles, there'll be four answers. If there's three cycles, means uh, like for example, sine 3x or cos 3x. Uh, okay, then there's six answers altogether. Okay, but I think at your level, at your syllabus, uh, they will not allow you more than four answers, uh, which is two cycles. Okay, so it's always good to remember. Uh, two cycles, uh, it still doesn't mean, you know, it still means the same thing. You know? It follows the quadrant, quadrant one, quadrant two, color sign positive. Okay, so there's always, there's always two angles for every equation. Okay, at, at the very least. Okay, but if there's two cycles, color common when your trigonometric function runs for two cycles, then of course you have four answers. Lah. Okay, three cycles is six answers and so on and so forth. Okay. Okay, question number 22. Five students are to be chosen from a group of five girls and five boys. Chosen means C. Yeah? We're not talking about choose and this one. Okay, especially with number of different teams. Lah, so we don't care about the arrangement of the team. So we're talking about NCR. Okay, now if there is three boys and two girls, it's very simple. Huh? So you have five boys choose three, five girls choose two. So the first one will be 5C3 times 5C2. Okay, this will be, is it 100? 5C3 times 5C2. Yeah, 100. Okay. Now, at least three girls, huh? okay, so think about it. At least three girls means three girls, two boys. Okay, situation number one. Situation number two will be four girls, one boy. Because your team must have five people. Okay, <laughs> five people. And the last situation will be five girls. Okay, zero boys. Totally all girl team. Okay, all girl power. Remember, uh, you only want five students to be chosen, so you don't go more than that. So, situation number one, tiga perempuan, dua lelaki. So, tiga perempuan is B, will be this lah, hundred lah. Ini kita sudah kira kan, tiga perempuan, dua lelaki. Oh, same thing lah, kan, 5C3, 5C2, can. Okay, then, plus, four girls, 5C4 times 5C1. Okay, there's four girls and one boy. And then plus another 5C5 times 5C0. Five girls, zero boys. Okay, so this will give you 100 plus uh, 5C4, 5C1 is uh, 25. Times 5C1, 25. Okay, plus one. So this will give you 126 ways altogether. Okay, this is actually a textbook question. I think so. I remember seeing this in a textbook, either textbook or workbook. Lah. Okay, nothing special, this question. It's a very easy question. Okay, 23. We're almost there, guys. Okay, 23, a set of six data has a mean of nine. And the sum of squares is one, two, five, oh. Okay, let's get used to this. Lah. When you see sum of squares, think about this. Sum of squares equals to one, two, five, oh. Okay, I'm very tired about people asking me how to remember what is this. Just remember, sum of squares is 1, 2, 5, 4. Okay, sum of squares is sigma x squared. Because formula for standard deviation, uh, oh, the spelling of the standard deviation. Formula for standard deviation is sum of squares over n minus mean. The mean must be squared. Okay, uh, square root. Now, 6 data has a mean of 9. Huh? Means huh? 9 equals to your sum of x over 6. Means your sum of x, huh? the total number of the 6 numbers, okay, is actually 9 times 6 is 54. Okay, so this is what is given. Lah. Now, if the number 7 is removed from the set of data, okay, so all values now, uh, all is sum of x is 54, sum of x squared is uh, 1, 2, 5, 0. Okay, your n is 6. Now, new. Kalau kamu keluarkan nombor 7, 
Okay, means your total lah akan berkurang sebanyak tujuh lah. So 54 minus 7, the sum of x now will be 47. And your sum of x squared, okay, will be 1, 2, 5, 0 minus 7 squared. Okay, sebab itu 7 kena kasih squared baru kau bertambah. That's why it's called a sum of x squared. Okay, so 1, 2, 5, 0 minus 7 squared will give you 1, 2, 0, 1. And your number will be 5. Tinggal 5 nombor lagi lah. So, kau sudah kasih keluar. Okay. So, calculate the standard deviation of the remaining set of data. Okay. So, we have this. We can calculate the mean actually. So, the mean is 47 over 5. Which will be about 9.4. Okay, so my standard deviation will be 1201 over 5 minus 9.4 squared, square root. Okay, 1201 divided by 5 minus 9.4 squared. Okay, square root everything, I will get 12.322. Final answer. Okay, this will be a difficulty of maybe three, three, yeah, three. Okay, of course, if you don't understand what is sum of squares, or if you don't remember how to manipulate the standard deviation formula, it will be a little, a little bit tougher. Lah. Okay, but if you really understand how the sum of squares and the, the mean works, lah, okay, it's actually quite an easy question. Okay, random variable x equals to b and p has a binomial distribution with eight trials. So this is n. Okay, where the probability of success in each trial is p. It's not given. Mean is 4. So formula for mean is n p. So since the mean is 4, and your n is already given as 8, so you know what is p? La? p is 1 over 2. Okay, nothing much over here. La. It's just a... <laughs> yeah. I, I don't see anything difficult. Lah. Kalau kau lupa the formula for mean, then obviously it's difficult. Lah. Okay, mean is NP bahkan, yeah. Hmm. Okay, mean is the number you know, times the probability of success. Correct. Hmm. So, 1 over 2. Done. <clears throat> okay, last question. Uh, I've given these values here because I don't have the table with me, so I'm just going to do some that. So, the masses of bags of paddy is normally distributed with a mean of u and this one, given that 2.28%. Now, whenever you see percent, okay, and normally distributed, okay, change it to probability. So, 2.28 divided by 100, you will get 0 0.0228. Okay, and then 16.6 divided by 100, you will get 0 0.166. Okay, now 2.28% is mass of more than 50. That means uh, the probability of x more than 50 is equals to 0 0.2, 0 0.0228. And the probability of less than 32, px is less than 32.18 is 0 0.166. Okay, so this is obviously uh, uh, from the right to the left. Uh, if you use Cikgu Jamalia's uh, upper table method, uh, okay, you will get this one. Uh, so this is 0 0.0228. Okay, the answer is more. Okay, so what is our Z value? Our Z value will be 2. But is it positive or negative? It will be positive because it is more and then the probability is less than 0 0.5. Probability, yeah, okay. Probability is less than 0 0.5 and it's more. So we want positive too. Okay. So that means uh, our, x, our x value is 50. So that means we can get 2 equals to 50 minus our mean over sigma. Okay, that's our first equation. Okay. Same method for this. Okay, our probability is 0 0.166, but we are using less. 
okay? Probability is less than 0 0.5. The symbol says less. So your answer, 0 0.166, after you change from the table, you will get negative 0 0.97. So our Z is negative 0 0.97. So that means negative 0 0.97 equals to 32.18 minus our mean over sigma. Okay. So, uh, just don't forget, uh, kalau, I mean, I have given you all the table. If your probability is more than 0 0.5 and the question asks for more, whether the Z value is positive or negative, that's a very important thing to remember. Okay, please remember that. But now I'm going to complete this question. Uh. So, 2 sigma equals to 50 minus mu. This one will be negative 0 0.9 sigma equals to 32.18 minus uh, mean. Okay, I'm going to this one. So mean equals to 50 minus 2 sigma. So I'm going to put it over here. Negative 0 0.97 sigma equals to 32.18 minus 50 minus 2 sigma. Okay, simplifying this. Negative 0 0.97 on the sigma is like compared to something going to go okay? equals to 32.18 minus 50 plus 2 sigma. Okay, bringing the sigmas across, so I'll get negative 2.97 sigma equals to 32.18 minus 50 is negative 17.82. So my sigma will be 6. Wow, so nice the number. Okay, so sigma is 6, then my mu will be 50 minus 2 times 6 will be 38. Oh, Kali. 38. Okay, this will be my final answer. So this part is simultaneous equations. Lah. This whole section is simultaneous equations, which, we won't, which I won't go into it. It's strange that it is 3 marks. Lah. Okay, but uh, this part. Lah. Okay, this part is the actual normal distribution work. Okay, so... Uh, if you still don't know how to convert from probability to the value of Z, okay, please go and brush up on this skill. Okay, very important. How to read the table, or if you know how to use the calculator to, to do this, also can. Lah. Okay, but changing from probability all the way to uh, Z, okay, it's a very important skill that I hope you all acquire. All right, uh, and that's the end. That's the end of the paper. Wow, it's quite interesting that I finished this paper even faster than the SBP paper. Yeah. Okay, so you know what? Since we have some time, let me go back to question number four. See if there's an easier way to do this. Uh, let me see if I can find an easier way to answer question number four. Because the question number four, I think the way that I did it was a bit out of place. Uh, hold on. Uh. Is this a question? No, question number four. Okay. So question number four. Let me try again. Huh? Yeah, because when I gave it at the beginning, <laughs> it's such a doozy. Huh? Okay, so um, 27 minus log 3y equals to 64. Okay, um, what if I change everything to, uh, sorry. Okay, what if I change everything to 3 to the power of or something to the power of 3. Lah. So this would be 3 to the power of 3. Okay. Hmm. Negative log 3y equals to, this would be 4 to the power of 3. Okay. Yeah, 4 to the power of 3.
Hmm. Okay. 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 Sabar, sabar. So I get three. Then this will be negative log three y negative three log three y equals to four to the power of three. We'll get this. <laughs> It's eluding me lah. Okay, I'm sure it's there somewhere. Uh, if I change it back to index form, okay, you know what? Let me try and do this now. Let, kalau saya kekalkan this 64, okay, if I change it back to, or if I change it to log form, okay, I will get uh, log, 364 equals to negative 3 ah okay okay, okay. negative 3 log 3 y okay i do this sorry so this is the index form n equals to ax and then i change to log a n equals to x yeah okay so i put the 3 n is 3 lah eh, sorry n is a so log 364 equals to this one so because both are the same law, so I get 64 equals to y to the power of negative 3. It's the same. <laughs> I still get the same thing. And yeah. Okay, 4 to the power of 3 equals to y to the power of negative 3. I'll still get y equals to 1 over 4. Yeah, I will get the same method. So I think either way you do it or so, it's you know, you will still end up with, you will still end up with this equation. Now. Okay, y 4 to the power of 3 equals to y to the power of negative 3. Therefore, to make it logical, y must be equals to 1 over 4 in order for this to be correct. Yeah. Okay, uh, I think that's about everything. Um, so this Friday, we will do paper 2. Paper 2 is... Um, Actually, more difficult than paper one. Lah. Okay, honestly, if you ask me, um, I'm halfway doing paper two now. Paper two is actually a little bit more difficult than paper one. Paper one, they got a few killer questions. Lah. The, for example, the billboard question was a really ridiculous question. Lah. Uh, but paper two got a lot more ridiculous questions. Okay, so uh, if you can, before our class on Friday, can try paper two lah. okay try paper two on your own uh, and then we'll discuss it on friday for those of you who are joining the physics class on wednesday this wednesday i will have two different topics uh, from form four uh, forces and motion which is chapter two i will discuss paper two questions on forces and motion and i will discuss light experiment okay because light experiment is another favorite topic for this year lah. Okay, so so yeah, that will be on Wednesday. But this Wednesday's class now will be in the evening. Okay, I need to tell you all first now. Wednesday evening at four o'clock. Sorry, is this four? Yeah, four o'clock. Okay, Wednesday evening four o'clock. Uh, cause uh, I have a meeting in the morning, but I may change the time lah. Okay, I may change the time to to two p.m. But it doesn't matter if you can't join. It's okay. I will still carry on. Kalau ada satu orang, satu orang lah. Okay. Um, but I will still carry on and you can watch the YouTube video much later. Okay. If there's anything in today's session that you want to ask me, uh, you can either wait for the YouTube video to come out. Okay. I just need to do a little bit of editing. When the YouTube video comes out, you can watch it again and, you know, copy down the answers. Or you can, you know, you can straight away ask me. Okay. Totally no problem. All right, everyone, uh, have a good day. I will see you all in the next class.